What if I told you guys that it will only take one minute per day to rewire your mind to attract and manifest the relationship that you actually desire? Just stay with me here for just a moment. If you guys are attracting Casper, the not so friendly men that ghost, then this video is going to be for you because we attract what we are. So the first thing I want you to do, anytime you have an experience where someone ghosts you, immediately say thank you because ghosting stands for what? guiding hints of self-truth. It is showing you that deep down, you still have an inner battle about love. And until you dig that belief up, bring it to the surface and deal with it, you are gonna continue to attract men that ghost. But this is what I love about dating because dating shows you exactly where you are. And your mind is the gatekeeper, which is why you have to find the key. You have to find where you are stuck so you can unlock that belief. And the minute you do, I promise you guys, this shift is immediate. You will start attracting men that show up. You will start attracting men that are consistent. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the top five beliefs that may be keeping you stuck. How to address this inner battle so that you can shift it and then I'm leaving you guys with a one minute audio that is going to train and redirect the momentum of your mind and your beliefs about love hey guys I am Angela Jean if you are new to my channel I am a mindset and manifestation coach that actually learned how to manifest during one of the darkest times of my life I lost my dad and my little sister to suicide and in the process of that journey I became very obsessive about finding answers obviously answers that we'll never get but I started studying the mind and also I had to find ways to soothe my own pain, my own rumination, my own catastrophic thoughts. So I started learning how to train the momentum of my mind, but also how to redirect the thought patterns because that was something I was struggling with. I was going down many rabbit holes for many years. So it became a battle that I dedicated myself to figure out. And in the process, I started manifesting. So now my entire channel is dedicated to everything that I learned to emotionally calibrate, to train my mind, to redirect my thought patterns so that I could show you guys how to train the momentum of your mind so that you can manifest the life you desire. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the five beliefs that may be keeping you stuck and blocking you from manifesting the relationship that you desire. All right, guys, so the first thing that's very common that you may have experienced that could be creating an inner battle about love is if you never saw a successful relationship growing up. What did your household look like? How did your parents treat each other? Like many of us have never seen a successful path when it comes to relationships, then even though we may sit here and say we want a relationship, deep down in the back of our mind, we have our memory of what our households look like, the arguing. We never saw that love looks happy. We never saw that love looks like something fun. So deep down, we have this belief that love is fighting, that love is chaos. So it creates that inner battle. Let's move on to number two. Number two is if you had a challenging relationship with your parents. So I'm a woman, if I had a challenging relationship with my dad, my dad was very kind. However, I had multiple stepmoms, so I always felt like I was competing. I always felt like I wasn't chosen. Unfortunately, the child mind can only write the story that we are capable of, right? Because we don't have the emotional intelligence. We don't have the life experience to understand what's going on. So until we circle back to those stories and rewrite them, it's the stories that we carry and those stories are what create the internal battle. So until I actually brought it to the surface and revisited that experience from my adult mind, knowing what I know now, I was attracting men that put me in third parties. I was attracting men that made me feel like they didn't choose me because that's what I was taught. We replicate what we learn because that's what love is to us. You have to sit with these beliefs because the subconscious mind doesn't think it's bad. It doesn't label anything. It's just like, this is what I was taught. This is what I know. This is the program. So this is what we're going to do. You have to sit back down with it because the conscious mind knows that this isn't love. But for some reason, you keep choosing it. If for some reason you keep doing something, it's because you have a program that is telling you that this is what it is. All right, let's move on to number three. All right, number three, let's completely switch gears. Let's take childhood out of the story. Let's just say you had an actual epic love story, but unfortunately it ended and maybe he cheated or something happened and the pain you felt was so overwhelming that you swore to yourself you're never gonna feel that way again. So in the process of protecting yourself, the walls go up around your heart and you only allow in people that you know cannot hurt you. This is why a lot of men are players. Everyone likes to say, oh, they're players because they like to have sex. No, players are actually protecting themselves from getting hurt again. So I'm not saying that you become a player, I'm just saying you become so guarded that we attract what we are. 
So you will also attract a guarded man. And those men are usually labeled players. You see how we attract what we are? Number four was kind of my situation. So maybe you've been single for a long time and you've had some epic love stories and you've tried dating in the modern world and it's just not for you. And you're like, you know what? I'm good. So you could become very complacent and you set up your life in a framework that you are good and you could be like this forever. I have a full calendar all the time. So for me, what would happen, I would meet someone that would wanna start building and spending more time together and I was like, holy shit, this felt like a sacrifice. I was like, this guy's gonna fuck up my peaceful sanctuary. I was guarding this sanctuary I had created with iron fist, you guys, because I was so good, I was so healed, everything was so peaceful. I don't want to let anyone in that's going to rock my boat. But what that does, it creates that inner battle about love. So even though I'm actively dating, actively saying I wanted love, in my mind, in my deep-rooted belief, I believed that it meant I had to sacrifice my peace, I had to sacrifice my fun, sacrifice my happiness, sacrifice my balance. And maybe you can relate to this one, it's probably a very common depending upon how old you are, if you guys are in your 40s like me, it's very common to get this complacent. So that's number four. And number five, lastly, is the risk of feeling lonely. Let me elaborate because obviously you're thinking, if you're single, how can you not be lonely? Loneliness is something I really studied as well because obviously when I lost my family, I felt very lonely. So I started going out and really watching people. I know it's kind of creepy, but I had to do so many things back then. I was going out and I was eating alone and I would sit and I would watch people eat. And there were so many people that were together that wouldn't even speak to each other throughout the whole dinner. So I was like, okay, loneliness has nothing to do with whether or not someone is sitting next to you. Loneliness is this deep self-love, is this deep all-knowing. And I can't really get into that in this video, but what I wanna elaborate on is obviously we all acclimate to being alone and being single, and we get good at it. And then we meet someone that we like, and let's say we date for a month, I don't want to put a month on it, but my point is long enough for you to get attached, long enough for you to get used to someone checking in on you and used to having someone be there. Obviously, that's something we can get used to and it kind of feels good. And let's say it falls apart. All of a sudden, you feel the stab of loneliness again, which you did not feel before this person came into your life because you have acclimated to your single life. And that is something that we will guard ourselves from feeling because it's not a good feeling. It's like when you're looking at your phone and they're not texting you anymore and you're like, oh God, I kind of liked having someone there. If you really look at our deep rooted beliefs, you guys, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to feel like they have someone there. We acclimate to this world and this world has gotten so lonely that people have created vices and we have talked ourselves into our own lies. So in the process of any of these five, we create an inner battle about love and that is why all of us are struggling to find relationships. So whichever one of those beliefs that you identify with, I want you to hold on to that story, okay? And then I want you guys, this is gonna sound crazy, but I always say to date aggressively because dating will show you exactly where you are and dating always triggers your trauma, okay? The minute that trauma rushes to the surface, that is your moment to redirect that story and it does not happen immediately. This is a process that takes time, but you have to redirect that story when it rushes to the surface and tells you X, Y, Z, that's your moment to take it by the neck and be like, no, this is the story. No, this is what I want. No, I'm in charge. No, you're gonna listen to me, okay? you guys because this is what has to happen you have to redirect that psycho cybernetic loop every time you are triggered use that as a moment look forward to your triggers get trigger happy I say another exercise that you guys can do that I have also done you have to surround yourself with the environment of romance and love and I know that sounds crazy but only hang out with friends that are in happy relationships consume yourself with romance watch romantic movies listen to romantic music you really have to feed your mind the life that you desire because right now it doesn't have anything new to pull it in the direction of possibility it's still focused on the problems about love the inner battles about love you have to feed your mind to redirect it to the life that you desire and this can only happen if you consistently circle it back and tell it this is where we're going to help you guys start reprogramming your mind, I started creating one minute audios. I did one minute because I figure if you want to listen to it longer, you can put it on repeat. Everybody can do one minute. If you guys can't do one minute, then just go get 10 cats and be done with it. You know what I mean? Come on. But if you want to start feeding your mind the life that you desire, listen to this audio. It's called Goddess. And the lyric is, I'm a goddess. I'm worthy of the absolute best. 
I accept nothing less than what honors my divinity. Listen to it on repeat, you guys, and don't underestimate the power of my audios. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know how to hook the mind. I know how to feed the mind clear, concise words, because when you feed your mind clarity of what you want, there's no confusion. And it'll start dancing in your mind. It'll start replacing your negative thought patterns. And eventually you will hit an intersection in your mind where you just start to feel different about love. You just start to feel different about relationships and you don't know why, but I know why (laughs) because I'm intentionally feeding you guys these audio files to start sculpting your mind because when you sculpt your mind, you shape your reality. All right, guys, I am Angela Jean. I will stop talking now and I will see you guys next week.